folks, and JW here with Stephen's Family Outdoors. And uh, I'd like to share with you something here about something that I do on the trap line with my traps. Um, I was checking my snares and my traps today and I started thinking um, about a subject that a lot of folks would talk about and um, that's pan tension. Pay attention on your traps, um, and I don't think there's too much discrepancy about what it should be, you know, like a fox is like an average of 12 pounds is a fox. He weighs about 12 pounds, so you just quarter that up um, to about 3 pound pan tension, 2 to 3 pound pan tension for a red fox. A uh, coyote, you can say he's 25, 35 pound average, eastern coyote, eastern coyote that is. <clears throat> and so you just, uh, if you quarter that up, you got about seven, seven and a half pounds. So, I've got both red fox and coyote on my trap line, so I'm not going to set my pan tension stiff like seven, seven and a half pounds. Just to catch a coyote, <clears throat> I want to catch a red fox too. So I go from three to seven, so around five pounds, four pounds, um, even three and a half you can catch coyotes with if you if you do it right. Now there are a lot of uh, tools out there in the trapping world that you can set your pan tension to exactly what you want. And I guess a lot of guys will have their traps set in their shop and, and they'll go and they'll um, set the pan tension on their traps uh, either before they wax them or after they wax them or whatever. Um, preferably, if you're going to do it that way, you want to do it after you wax because the wax are going to stiffen up your pan bolt. Um, basically... I don't use it, those tools to set my pan tension in advance. Um, what I do is when I'm on the line and I'm getting ready to actually set the trap, I'll take the pan, put it between my fingers, and I'll move it up and down. Now, over the years, I've acquired a feel for an approximate for both fox and coyotes. Now, <clears throat> I can't take credit for this here. Uh, the Leggetts, Pete and Ron Leggett, which really, really good friends of mine. And uh, uh, Pete was my mentor, and I appreciate everything he's taught me. Uh, but if you're running a 150 to 200 mile trap line every day, you don't have time to get your um, pan tension uh, tool out and check every trap at every set and every remake. So you learn to do this and feel approximately what would work at that time. Now, <clears throat> as you set the trap and it sets in the ground, <clears throat> Say you don't make a catch for three days. Well, something's going to happen to this pan post. Um, it's going to stiffen up from, from the weather, from the moisture uh, in the ground. Um, oxidation sometimes sets in there and it gets stiffer. So, you, you know, to actually preset your pan... To exactly two and a half or three pounds or five pounds or whatever you're going to set it at. To me, this is me now, it's futile to do that because I set it and I feel the pan tension and you you will acquire a feel over, over time on what would be right at that moment. So you set that trap and the next time you come back, if you have an animal in it, you may find that it's floppy and it's flopping around and it won't even stay up on its own. So what you do, you just tighten your pan bolt down to 
that approximation again where you can feel there it is and you set it and you go on you don't waste a lot of time on the line uh, with uh, pan tensioning tools which if you have one and you use one that's fine I'm talking about myself what I do for speed uh, <clears throat> we set when we're on the line we set 99.9% .9 .9 dirt holes and we go we get on down the road uh, we set maybe two to four traps per farm and get down the road to another family unit of canines uh, and so I wanted to share that with you today and um, just let you in on a little secret on how I do it and you can acquire a feel of the pan tension that you will need for the canines in your area Thanks for watching. This is JW with Stevens Family Outdoors. Have a good day. God bless. In those West Virginia